I am doing a video today on carnivore enchiladas. <laughs> that was my dog's barking. Um, so what I'm going to start with is a homemade mole sauce. And if I pronounce something wrong on here, I do apologize. Um, correct me in the comments because I honestly don't know how to pronounce a lot of stuff. But so with my homemade mole sauce, I am going to start with one and a half cups of bone broth. And this is the brand of bone broth I got. And I'm going to start with four of the um, guajillo chilies and one of the japone chilies. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing any of that right, but this is how I make it. And I, I only make it with one of these because I don't want it that spicy. I'm also getting ready to de-seed these. So all I'm going to do, as you can see, there's some seeds in there, is I'm going to split them and I'm just going to push the seeds out. So I'll be back with you in a minute once I get them de-seeded. All right, I have de-seeded my peppers and you can see I just split them down the side and you can see all the seeds in the sink. Now if you like your stuff spicy, you can totally keep the seeds and it'll make them spicier. But I like mine a little spicy, but not where the spice is so overpowering that I don't catch the other flavors of the dish. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my bone broth over here. I'm going to put it on the stove and I'm going to turn the stove on because I want that to boil. Not a hard boil, but right when it gets to boiling, I'm going to put the peppers in there. Then I'll put a cover over it, turn the burner off, and let it sit for 30 minutes. And that way those peppers get kind of soaked into that bone broth juice. So we'll come back when I'm getting ready to do that. All right, so I wanted to show y'all my broth is getting ready to boil. You can see the little bubbles coming up around the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these peppers in there. I'm just going to mush them down. I'm going to let that get to bubbling one more time. And then I'm going to put, I don't have a lid for this pan. Don't ask me where the lid went because I have no clue. So I'm just putting a plate on it. <laughs> you know. You just learn to improvise. And if you're wondering about all the other pans on my stove, it's full of bacon grease. We have bacon with every meal and you're fixed to see I'll have bacon with these enchiladas. All right, let's let that start bubbling again. I can see it starting to bubble and boil. So what I'm gonna do is turn the burner off. And like I said, I got a plate that sits right over it. So while that's cooling and steeping, I have got some cut up bacon here and two pounds of ground beef. Now, I don't need that much for these enchiladas. However, I'm going to have tacos tomorrow night, too. So, my husband decided last night he loved the enchilada so much. He loved the tacos we made the other night that that's what he wants the rest of the week. So, that's what we're having. <laughs> but I'm going to start off by sauteing the bacon because bacon goes with everything. It's not traditionally in enchiladas, but why not? And all I'm going to do is put that in this pan. And I am going to cook the bacon first. So that way it's got, produces the grease and greases the pan. So when I do the ground beef, it um, doesn't stick to it. And I just put that on a medium heat. So I'll see you once that's done. All right, you can see where my bacon's at. It's crisping up some, it's cooked a little bit, so I'm getting ready to put the ground beef in there. Now the um, grease that I had from this bacon, I put some of it in my back pan that I keep bacon grease, just because I don't want that much oil making the enchiladas because it'll make a big mess in your pan. So I'm getting ready to take this ground beef and put it in there. All right, I got all my ground beef in there. So I'm getting ready to put the seasoning. Now some people might make their own seasoning. I am lazy. We buy the chicken fajita mix at a local supermarket. Um, you can probably find it online, I'm not sure. But the reason I get it, and let me see if I can make this focus. Um, there's the ingredients. Very simple ingredients. I would have to use the same ingredients. I'd rather than do it. So I'm getting ready 
to put that on that and mix it up and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I'm gonna let this meat cook. I'm gonna let it brown. I've got the seasoning all soaked in and I'm getting ready to make the mole sauce. All right, this is almost done browning, but I do wanna keep it a little bit warm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my stove a little bit lower. I turned it down some. Now I'm gonna come over here and get ready to make the mole sauce, which I have a blender for um, because I do want the peppers to get chopped up. The ingredients we'll need for this is my mixture with the peppers. We're gonna have one teaspoon of erythritol or one and a half teaspoons of erythritol, sorry, one teaspoon cacao and a half a teaspoon of Edmonds Real Salt and one clove of garlic, which I've already got it measured out here. So I'm going to take this mixture and dump all of it in there, including the peppers, because I want to blend the peppers up with it. And I'm going to take all of this and just pour it in. And put the lid on. Sorry. Hold on a second and I'll get back with you while I put it on the all right, I've got it on the blender. This is a Vitamix blender. Any blender, blender will work. Um, when we first started doing keto and stuff, we got this. Um, we found a really good sale on it at Best Buy, and I've got to say it's been an excellent blender. You can actually make soups in it and stuff. Um, but this is what we're going to use, so it's going to get super loud really quick. So bear with me. I'm just kind of starting it. Let it get some of it chopped up. That's it. The mole sauce is ready for when we do the enchiladas. So let me let my hamburger mixture cool down for a few minutes and we'll get to making that. And I'm going to pour this in another jar just because I don't need to keep it in that container. And it'll store in the refrigerator for a little while too. Um, with the bone broth in it, I'd probably say at least two weeks it'll store. Um, we never have it in there that long because it tastes so freaking good. So, <laughs> alright. All right, I'm getting ready to wrap the enchiladas. I let the meat cool some. I got my mole in a jar here. I did the tortillas earlier. I'm gonna leave the recipe for the tortillas, a link to it down in the um, description. So that way y'all have that, but it's made out of pork rinds. So you can't go wrong. Um, let me see where I can position this so y'all can see me. Oops, sorry. Well, hold on, I might have to enlist my husband's help. All right, so hubby's holding the camera now so it'll work out a little better. I'm gonna start wrapping these, but before I wrap them, I'm gonna put some cheese in this mixture. So that way it cooks in with the enchiladas. And the cheese I'm using before I forget is just a Mexican blend that I got at the local grocery store. get that mixed up. And that's just going to put some cheese in it. So I'm going to take my tortilla. I'm going to scoop me some in there. Just like you would any other enchilada recipe. And I'm using a pie pan. If you have a rectangle pan, use it because it'll work out a lot better. And I'm just going to wrap it and my hand kind of warms it up and makes it pliable. And then I'm just going to set it right there and get ready for the next one. And let me go ahead and do it. And before I get too far, I need to mention you want to turn your oven on to um, 360 because we're going to bake these for between 20 to 25 minutes at 360. So you want it to have it preheating while we're doing this. All right, so I've wrapped it. I'm going to let my hands warm it up some because that makes it pliable. 
and then just put it like that in there and I'll go ahead and do the rest of them and we'll come back to you once I got them done. All right, so I'm putting the mole sauce on. I'm putting about two spoons on each. Um, when we had the enchiladas last night, I was a little more sparing with it, but I don't think we want to be tonight. We want to douse that. And like I said, when you clean the um, chiles, you can um, keep the seeds with it, or some of the seeds, and it'll make it spicier. But I'm coating each one with the sauce. And like I said, a rectangle pan would work out a little better for you than a pie pan. But <laughs> if you only got a pie pan, use a pie pan. You think that's enough, Molly? Yeah. Yeah? I'm going to put a little more touch here just because I want it smothered. All right. And see, I still have plenty left in the fridge, so that'll give me a lot. So now all I'm going to do is put my cheese over it. And that's happy goodness. Yeah, it seems like a lot of cheese. It'll melt down, but <laughs> it'll be good. <laughs> and I don't have a measurement on how much cheese. That's just kind of like individual liking. If you like a lot of cheese, put a lot. If you don't like a lot, don't put a lot. And if you're real hungry, add a ribeye and some bacon. All right, so I'm going to take this over here. I put, always put my stuff in the oven in a pan just in case there's some weird thing that takes place. And I'm going to pop it in the oven. And we'll come back and see it in about 25 minutes. Alright, so I'm turning the oven off because it is time for it to come out. Ooh, that was hot. And that's what it looks like when it's done. And give me a minute and we're going to put some on plates. Alright, I'm going to take it out and put some on this plate so you can see how the pork rind, quote unquote, corn tortillas, tortillas stay together. <laughs> just scooping this corner when we kind of stuff this pan. And there's another one here. We kind of stuffed the pan pretty far so I don't think we could have fit any more into this pan. And then let me grab a fork. See how well they stay together? And that's using the pork rinds to make the um, corn tortillas with. And like I said earlier, I'll link the recipe down at the bottom. Um, I hope y'all make this recipe. I hope you enjoy it. And you know, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much.